Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our reality. My name is Kent, and I am your host, along with former Real Housewife of Orange County, Gina Keo. How are you, Gina? I'm awesome. That's great. Today, we have a really fun guest on. She's a friend, actually, of both of ours, Dana Wilkie. Uh, she's doing a ton with her Patreon podcast right now. It's called Dana Wilkie Dishing Drama. So, yeah, how are you, Dana? I love how you, everybody always says the name backwards. Like maybe. I- <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> Wait, how do you want it said? It's dishing drama, Dana Wilkie. Dun, da, da, da. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Ken. I like you improvising. That was cute. <laughs> oh, what's going on in your world right now? Uh, well, I mean, what I'm, I'm just, I was telling Gina earlier, all I do Uh, besides my publicity job, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a publicist. I do other stuff, but I'm, I'm mainly a publicist. And I also have been now doing like a good half of my time making content for my YouTube channel and my Patreon, which is like my Reddit. So I'm actually like trying to do this like as a job. Yeah. And it, your YouTube has blown up really quick. It did. It monetized fast. I was like, wow. Although you got a Gina, just to say it to you, YouTube, it's really hard to make money. Like you have to get at least um, uh, 1.3 million um, like clicks or like views to be able to make money. So yeah, it's going to be an uphill battle. If you start seeing me flash my boobs, you'll know why. (laughs) So so where is... Where is Vicky's podcast? Is Vicky on serious? Well, Vic, Vicky's or okay. So Vicky, YouTube? um, I'm not sure. Uh, what's the name of her pod? And I'll tell you. I think it's just her name. It's just Vicky. And then Tamara's got one too. I think they all have them. I think Vicky stopped doing hers for a while. Cause I used to listen to it. She was pretty busy. Probably. She had whoop it up with Vicky and then reality with Vicky. Hmm. Okay. So those, all of the, the ones that are not done on, let's say like serious radio or pretty much serious radio, those are all making money off advertising. If they're public, if they're private, like mine, they're making money off people paying to support the show. So for example, I have like almost 500 people that yeah. belong to my Patreon, which is like my Reddit. And that's where my Dishing Drama Dana Wilkie Uncensored podcast is. You can't listen to it unless you're a member. Mm. So I, so, so, you know, that's why I was able to, to, to make, you know, monetize it so quickly. But if you're just doing it in the regular wor- world, you have to, you know, you have to be getting a decent amount of downloads per show. You have to be in like the top 1%. Okay. Yeah. But it, it, it grows. But, you know, you have to combine it with lots of different things to really do it, you know? Yeah. Uh, what's going on in the world of housewife gossip and what details can you tell us? A lot. Um, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion is coming up. Uh, Andy has basically asked Erica, how did she do with the reunion or feel like she did? And she said, great. Um, it's expected that her and Kyle are going to have a, a fight because she felt like um, she wasn't loyal uh, to her, even though Kyle was pretty loyal to her. But that's the way the impression, I guess, in the last dinner party from hell was. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that's really that and the Sutton, you know, there'll be like an argument with Sutton and Crystal, it looks like. Uh, about what, you know, the, the racism comments in the beginning of the show. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Oh, so basically in the first few episodes of the show, Crystal and Sutton get into it because Sutton refuses to like listen to Crystal's opinion about, you know, being Asian and all that. And then it, it turns into like a racist argument, like a racial argument. Oh. And... I don't know. They don't, they never really set it aside. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be one of the topics. And then of course, Sutton and Erica, Mm. a lot of fans were outraged that Sutton was on the outside seat. Gina, what do you think about that? I didn't get to see the show at all. I didn't watch one episode yet. So (laughs) if I get COVID or something, I'm going to, I'll, I'll binge. (laughs) 
I need you to not get COVID and binge anyway. <laughs> I got the vaccine and I'm pretty careful, except this afternoon I'm supposed to go to a concert. Oh, That's wow. What concert? It's the Tijuana Dogs. Oh, I love the Tijuana Dogs. Oh, they're so great. They're out at a park in San Juan. I love it. And it's 90 degrees out, so it should be beautiful. Oh, my goodness. It sounds so fun. So yeah. anyway, what what other gossip is happening um, with the show? Uh, I, I mean, really, the newest thing is that Erica Jane Girardi's mom went on Twitter and said that the housewives that Erica's with uh, on the show should be paying back the victims as much as Erica should be. What? Yeah. Yeah. She went out publicly and said that. And nice. Pretty aggressive move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello. And and there goes your Christmas present, mom. Uh well, I think, you know, my initial I guess the initial reaction was the mom was supporting in a way the victims, but then the secondary interpretation of that Twitter was that the mom was saying to the women on the show with Erica, shut up and you should pay back the victims, like Kyle Richards and so there were like a few different interpretations of it. Some people saw it as supportive to the victims and some people saw it as her supporting her daughter and telling like the other housewives, shut up and you pay, you know, kind of thing. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So that came out just yesterday and that was like a, that created quite a little stir. Um, Erica has been saying that she feels like she's getting extorted by the trustees, attorney, uh, consulting attorney, Ronald Richards, because Ronald keeps calling out, you know, that she, you know, she hasn't done anything to help the victims. And she took a lot of money over the last five years. And she really is supposed to give it to the trustee because it wasn't hers to take. And I'm sure she spent it. Yeah, I'm sure she spent it on cars and purses and there's none left to take. Because the, the trustee would have gone in and taken it right away. Well, they're saying return it now. So this is where yeah, it's sure. sitting. I know. Yeah, here, have my Hermes purse. What are you going to do? Well, that's, I, I think they're actually like, they kind of would do that if they could. I think they would do anything. Because remember, Tom Girardi's victims were like cancer people, burn victims, like people who are really vulnerable. So they were already really vulnerable. And then he stole their money that they won because that's, of the that's thing. That's so wrong that he did that. It's horrible. I mean, I mean, you got to remember that we're not talking about just like creditors. We're talking about, you know, literally people who lost okay. loved ones on plane crashes and were paid money to, to make them whole, not to, you know, never emotionally, but whole financially that their breadwinner that was mm -hmm. killed in that plane crash got something to support that family. So he took right. all of the money. They yes. didn't get any of it. No. And oh, what, like, wow. how did he think he could get away with that? What the heck is wrong with him? He moved money like a Ponzi scheme. So he would take the money from one person and then he would move it to another, or he would make up a lie and say, he's going to go to jail. Well, he can't For a very long time. see what happened was right when they started the criminal investigation, he was originally telling people he had cancer and by people, I mean, Jay Edelson, who was the, the plane victims I just talked about. He was their attorney yeah. and he was going, where's the money you, you, that you got for, from Boeing to pay these victims. And Tom was lying and saying, I have cancer. I have cancer. Can you give me more time? Well, then it turns out he never had cancer. And then all of a sudden he got, uh, purportedly got Alzheimer's, which means just like uh, Britney Spears, if you're in a conservatorship, you can't be deposed, you can't be a witness, and you can't really go to jail unless they can prove wow. that you're you're mentally sound to to um, do it. But who's in control of the conservatorship for him? His brother. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. And he's been, yeah. and just so you know, Jeannie, this has been going on for twenty years. So this theft. Wow. It's not in the last four years. It's not in the last three years. It's in the last 20 years. Oh, my God. I thought it was recent because I watched The Housewife and The Hustler, which you were on. Yes. Uh, ah. <laughs> and Gina um, hasn't you know, watched that either, I'm sure. I'm, I, need, I do want to see I it. I can't believe it. I'm crying. <laughs> I know. I'm going to watch it. I just have had too many people over. I'll buy you a Sky shirt. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> 
yeah. Or maybe we'll watch it together and Oh, Skype that would be something. so fun. Yeah. But while fun. we're on The Housewife and the Hustler, how has yeah. that impacted your career, Dana? Like with social media? And <laughs> you mean my pretend job that I made? Um, <laughs> um, you know, it's it was uh, the way that it came about actually didn't have to do with Real Housewives of Beverly Hills that much. It came about because the senior one of the senior producers at ABC was a fan of my show. Oh, OK. And was listening to my show. And and Gina, I interviewed on my show uh, a few people that were involved in the case. And uh, Matt Hamilton from the L.A. Times that broke the story that Tom Girardi was actually uh, borderline bribing people at the California Bar Association to avoid trouble with the plaintiff bar, which is the regulatory oh, wow. body that watches over attorneys to make sure they're not screwing consumers. Well, guess what? He had people on the inside there that that were conflicted with him being oh. in a position of power. And um, so I had interviewed the, the L.A. Times writer with his partner, Harriet, by the way. Uh, Harriet wasn't on my show, but Matt Hamilton was from the L.A. Times. It broke that story. And it was a, a ridiculously well-written, researched story. And then I had one of a very rare interview with Jay Edelson, who represented the Lion Air victims, who were the people that he was the um, attorney that discovered that Tom Girardi had stolen the money and believed it was a Ponzi scheme. And he was also the person who went public and said that he believed that Erica Girardi's divorce was a sham oh. to to address, uh, to try to address this problem that was blowing up at that time. And that was why the divorce was suddenly seemingly happening out of the blue. Mm. And Jay Edelson was on my show and he talked in depth about that. And then I also spoke with some of the victims, although they did not come on my show, but I spoke to them privately course, yeah. um, because they wanted to tell me things. They they saw that I had like a big interest in the topic. And so I got to know some of them. And yeah, so it was like, there was a lot like, oh, and then I also spoke to Ronald Richards a few times. And, be, and this was before he was appointed as a consulting attorney to the trustee when Tom Girardi would bankrupt both personally and as Girardi Keys as the law, the pretend law firm, because he never actually had one. Mm. Uh, it was not a, a true partnership. So I spoke to um, him too. So I was kind of like, I guess that's really why it happened. And then I think she was like, oh, and also that's so cool that you also have the insight from being on the show. Right. Well, that's neat. Yeah. Well, I feel bad for Erica. I hope everything works out for her. And yeah. um, have you met she her? She has to live with it. I never have. Okay. No, I just feel bad. Anytime I have a, a friend, client, 12 year client that owned a personal injury firm in Orange County. He just got convicted and it said 17 counts convicted. And I felt so bad for his wife. She's packing everything up and he could be in jail for 10 years or 200 wow. years. Oh, I think I and heard so about this. He got indicted. Um, he was like working. Wasn't he working with Sweet James a little bit? A little bit. Yeah, probably. Well, he so Sweet James uh, it came out that uh, not Sweet James. Sweet James was not indicted. I want to make that clear. But no, he hasn't gone to court yet. No, uh, but this other gentleman who was uh, affiliated with Sweet James's law firm got indicted with seventeen counts. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah, and but it's sad what it does to the family. It tears your family apart. And was it worth it? No. Right. You were making half of the print, the people's money anyway. The personal injury money. You were making half of it. Why wasn't that enough right. for you? So. Well, he hasn't been, even though he's been indicted, as you so cleverly stated, he hasn't been found guilty yet. But you're right. In the United States of America, unfortunately, when you're indicted, your world is nuked and you might as well be guilty of whatever it is, because that's the way the legal system works. It destroys you upon the indictment and not upon your hearing and the sentencing aspect. <laughs> it's like it happens up yeah. front. Right. So, you know, yep. and if you're poor, you sit in jail and you wait for it to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but at least you start at least like this case because of COVID, it took two or three years to come to trial. I think he should have just done two or three years with a jail time while COVID was happening anyway. Then he would have only had a few years to go. But now he's got to start all over. Well, I hope that he's not found guilty. But Sweet James hasn't been 
indicted yet. I'm sure, you know, it's not great for him though. I'm sure he's really, it really hurts your business when that happens. That's for sure. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and nobody's going to give you another case. Your career is over. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, the- but you know, it's interesting. He didn't own any real estate. They were renting for 35,000 a month. Wow. So it's not like they can go get his home. Well, his ex-wife, I think is where he owed the 5 million in property taxes. Mm-hmm. So I think that was her. property taxes. How can you owe five million in property taxes? He owed, I think it's property taxes. Yeah. No, it's got to be income tax. No, nope, it's property. Hold on. Let me look. Let me look. So Did he have a big house with his ex-wife? He must yeah, have. How expensive mm-hmm. was the house? I actually posted, I think, the tax liens in my Patreon. But you, they can put tax liens. It doesn't mean it's from your house. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me see if it was property or not. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So, what else is exciting? You guys are depressing the shit out of me, and I'm. Oh, pretty, sorry, I Gina. Actually, you know that's what we're here for, pal. Man, we're supposed <laughs> to be depressing. <fun. laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. I have to say something that is fun. Yeah, do some fun because I'm tired of this sad. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay so something that is fun is that my son just started who's turned 11 mm-hmm. he's just started uh virtual school and he likes wow, it great. Well, our kids are all going to school here in california and florida why is your kid doing virtual school well my son uh you get to pick for well, yeah, for, for a few reasons, but I, I didn't want to be held down, uh, you know, and have to go to physical school here. And also my son uh, is doing eighth grade math. So he he's gifted in math. And so because he's doing it virtually, we, you know, he, he can just like do it on this program without having to move classes and be with older kids and stuff like that. So for right now, it's working. Do I think it's going to work forever? No, no, but. they miss that social aspect. And when we were together in Montana with a bunch of kids that pretty much have been isolated, they mm-hmm. don't know how to play with other kids anymore. It's like mine, mine, mine. So the kids need to get back to school and figure out if you want to have friends, you have to share and be nice and all those things you learned when you were little. But I have to run. I have to jump in my car, you guys. Listen, I just want to say, take me with you, Gina. Take me with you. (laughs) I adore you. (laughs) So I wanted to ask you, who was your favorite cast member you were with on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? My favorite cast member was um, probably originally Taylor Armstrong. She was my best, one of my besties and in real life. And my other, the other person uh, was probably Kyle Richards because I ha- always had a blast with her off camera. Mm. That's good. So tell everyone who's listening about what happened between you and Taylor. So basically what happened was uh, everything seemed fine. Uh, we were, I think I went to her house. I dropped off like this really gorgeous care package when she was going through her, you know, uh, Russell's passing, mm-hmm. uh, her and I were, were speaking less, but I thought it was as a result of, um, you know, just all the drama that happened with Russell, uh, committing suicide at that time. And so I gave her space and then I went on season three and I was going through a really tough time and I did the famous train wreck scene which is like when I'm making fun of like, you know, it's pretty famous. You can Google it anyway. um, And, you know, my life was falling apart and she just kind of disengaged with me after that happened. And yeah. And I never heard from her again. Then I, I found out some really like kind of nasty gossip about her, which kind of made me question her integrity a little bit, but I mean, who am I to talk? So I was like, okay, you know, but I mean, that did happen in my own mind. Right. And then, um, and then all of a sudden I, I heard that she had seen some friends of mine and she'd asked about me and she was really nice. And so I thought, okay, so things are good. It's just like, we're not talking. Yeah. Um, but then what happened was, um, 
I got really upset because she gave a bunch of interviews for Bravo. She like resurfaced and did all these nostalgic videos for Bravo. And she did not mention my name once wow. in them. Oh, that's not bad. And Yeah. And I was her friend of on the show and I was an absolute, you know, shot every scene with her practically. And, you know, I, sacrificed a lot by not coming out about her abuse on the show because she asked me not to. Right. And I definitely pissed the producers off that I wouldn't go there. And as a result of it, I truly believe it was one element amongst other things that led to me not being a full-time housewife and not coming back really in season three. So for her to, to not even acknowledge me really hurt my feelings and was like the ultimate diss. Right. That's horrible that she would do that, especially since you guys were so close. Well, I just would never do, I would never do that to someone like you, you definitely, even if you don't know someone anymore, you give credit where credit's due. Like she literally started saying Lisa Vanderpump did all this stuff for her, which couldn't have been further from the truth at the time, because Lisa Vanderpump was even questioning whether she was being abused. So like it made no sense. And she and I really believe she did that because Lisa Vanderpump is so popular. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Lisa brought it all up at her house at the tea. And when Taylor went and I don't know if you were there, um, but no, I wasn't at that. They didn't invite me because they knew I wouldn't talk about the abuse. Exactly. And I would defend her. Yeah. So they didn't want me to be at they they didn't want me to be at that yeah. tea party. I mean, even if you remember the last scene, I'm like screaming in the background. If my friend said it happened, it happened about her abuse because everybody was questioning it, including Lisa. So what a, a like talk about throwing salt on a cut to have you go, oh, my good friend Lisa was standing by my side the whole season. I'm like, you know, and it, it just was an obvious publicity play, you know, like that was more important to her. Right. And so the last question I have for you here is what was the reunion like for you? I loved it. I had a great time at the reunion. <laughs> I was, you know, I, I, I took great comfort actually in the fact that Andy was there because I just knew that Andy would witness what was said. Right. And I just, I, I really think that Andy has a great, uh, you know, we obviously he <laughs> throws me shade all the time, uh, you know, <laughs> especially since housewife and the hustler, but um, I do believe he has a great, creative eye for what's good. And I think, you know, it, it was really fun to have him around while I was able to talk and definitely. Yeah. And know that, you know, a lot of what I was saying was going to be shown. Um, and it also is a great moment to vindicate yourself. The, the, the scary part is they don't air everything. So you think you got something across and you don't. Right. Because it gets cut. Yeah. And so that is the tough part, but it is fun. I really, I actually uh, would rather uh, fight with people openly than I would to uh, have to be coy about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like for me, I really struggle with like pussyfooting around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As you probably can tell, I'm much better if I'm able to be straightforward. Right. Well, thank you so much for being here. And everyone, we just actually did a live stream with Dana on her YouTube channel. It's Dana Wilkie Decadish, right? It's Decadish Dana Wilkie. And uh, and then my Patreon, which is like my Reddit, where my podcast and uh, all my posts and stuff are, uh, is called Dishing Drama Dana Wilkie Uncensored on Patreon. Uh, so, you know, go check it out. So definitely you all go check that out and I will catch up with you later, Dana. Bye everybody. <laughs> that was fun. Dana always has great info on the Real Housewives drama. Make sure you check out our Instagram at our reality podcast and tune in next week for a new episode. Bye everyone. <laughs> <laughs>